I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, I'm out here in the garage today because I've got some work to do breaking down this sign. I'm going to be using the side rails to replace some of the pieces on this grinder frame. Specifically today, the treble. I need to have two trebles on here. You're supposed to balance it out between both feet. And this one, evidently, somebody took off one of the trebles. Now this one, I believe somebody has modified. Because it only has one hole for the bearing on the wheel. And the bearings that are on the wheel allow for two holes. That would keep the bearings from tipping back and forth. Those bearings are either optional or somebody put a different wheel on this frame. Now that's quite likely. Uh, it's been around a few years. For right now my intention is to remove this bolt that holds on the pedal so that I can remove the pedal and use it as a template. I also have to have it off just to put the new pedal on once I get it done. Since that involves a little bit of time and perhaps some heating, I'm going to go ahead and put the oil on it now so that I can get it ready to take apart. Now the rest of the frame came apart very easily. I was amazed. Usually when I get something like this, it's been sitting outside in the rain so long that there's just no way to get any of the bolts apart. The four that I tried to take out came loose almost with my fingers. And that was the one holding the bearings on. So I'm thinking chances are pretty good that those aren't the original bolts. Because the ones on the treble, they're in real rough shape. But then again, if this thing's set on the ground, the treble is going to be closest to the ground. It's going to pick up the most moisture. On the off chance this works, we're going to give it a shot. There we go. That's the right size. Let's see if this works. Well, that's just amazing. By putting the pliers on this direction and letting this part of the handle rest on the frame, all the load is just going into that jaw that's resting against the frame. It stops it from twisting. And I can take my hand and grip the frame and grab a hold of that pair of pliers. This top jaw, this, the top jaw that's connected to this bar gets pushed down. The bottom jaw gets pushed up and all the rotational force gets absorbed into the frame. So I can put a lot of torque on this thing without hardly working on it at all. And the bolt just came right off. Now, I put coil on it two weeks ago. So it's had two weeks to soak. It's been fairly warm outside on most days. So I think having that nut come off and being able to salvage this bolt is just tremendous. You can get an idea how old this thing is by how many times that 
piece of framework had to wrap around that and rub against it in order to wear it out. And this bolt was in just like that. So this little piece of treadle brace out here wore against that frame and actually wore a hole in it. Well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. That's an exact match. Now, to make this work, I want to cut out a piece that doesn't have any welds on it, if I can possibly do that. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. I've got a weld down here, a weld there. This one's going to be less of a problem. It'll be out in the center of the beam. So it won't be quite as obvious. And I have to trim one side of this beam down to 5 eighths anyways. So I can cut away some of that weld. So I'm going to set this up and cut, cut this out of this piece of angle iron. I'm not going to cut up any of the rest of the frame because who knows what I'm going to need it for next. And just to be sure I had enough of everything. I went down to Arrow Steel and bought a piece of one inch by one inch, eighth inch angle iron. One inch leg on either side, eighth inch thick. One by one by eighth. And a piece of uh, flat bar stock, one inch wide, to make the brace. That's one inch by eighth inch too. And I already have a piece of steel so I can make the pedal. We're going to have some fun with this one. I get to do some hot riveting to put this thing together again. That means I have to make the rivets because I don't know where the heck I'm going to find rivets this size. And even if I could, it's more fun to make them. So I have to make three rivets and cut two pieces, actually three pieces of steel today because I have to cut out the pedal too. I got this piece of angle iron down in Kalamazoo at Alro Steel. Alro Steel is my local supplier. It's a, kind of a, a retail store branch of a much larger corporation. You can go in there and buy drops of things and uh, short pieces like this. This is a cutoff from somebody else's job that they didn't want. So I got it at a reduced price. If you guys would like to see a, a trip to Alro, I can make arrangements to go down there and show you what it looks like being inside and how you go through the process of picking out iron and buying the materials and paying for it and just kind of give you a run through. If you'd like to see that, put a note in the comments. Otherwise, I'm not going to bother the people. Okay, first thing I did is look around and make sure I don't have any flammable material in the garage. I'm going to be using the plasma cutter. Next, I'm going to go through and lay out where my cuts are going to be. Now I don't have to have it bolted down or clamped down. It just makes it easier. And just in case anybody's wondering, this frame was leaning against the little barn out back. I have no idea where it came from, who it belongs to, other than it was left in my yard when I bought the house, it belongs to me. And I'll cut it a little bit long, just so I'll have some material to take off. It's always better to give yourself some extra room on things rather than trying to make it exactly the size with a plasma cutter. Now if I had a CNC, yeah I could just buzz through that no problem at all. But because I'm working with a handheld unit, I have to give myself a little consideration for being able to hold it at a steady angle. Also, this rusty steel, it has a tendency to blow out. Now, I'm more used to doing this with a gas torch than I am with a plasma cutter. The plasma cutters I worked with at work were all CNC. And they were machines that were operated by somebody else. I wrote the work instructions for them, how to use it, how to go about doing it. But 
Watching a CNC machine compared to using a hand machine, totally different operations. So I'm gonna rip this to width first because that way I'll have it held into the vise and it'll be easy to pull it along like this. Also to make Because this tip doesn't cut from the edge, it cuts from the center, I want to make sure that my guide rail, that's my, lets the center of my torch actually touch the line. Just to be sure I'm fairly well centered, I need to take a measurement. The width across this guide is one inch or 2.54 centimeters. If I set this guide rail 1.25 centimeters or half an inch away from the line that I want to cut to, I should be right where I want to be. coming in the door. To break, the winds that, to break the wind that's coming in the door, I'm going to go ahead and close the two garage doors. Hopefully I didn't screw up the tip. I wasn't cutting very evenly, and the surface was a little dirty. Mostly I'm going to lay it to my hand not being steady. But it looks pretty good. So the rest of the cutting I shouldn't need a guide on. Well, I'm anywhere from a sixteenth to an eighth inch too big. But I can always grind some off.
Well, that's got that loose. I think I'm going to skin it off the grinder. I'm not that confident with this plasma cutter to be doing that. I don't want to poke a hole in that piece of angle iron just because I was trying to be fancy. I was obviously going too slow on my long cut. That's okay. And we are free. Really is nice to get back to this grinding wheel project. It's uh, been a good 10 years since I started it. Not with this grinder, but with the first grinder. And I kept having one piece missing and not being able to proceed. Part of it was I got distracted on other things, but most of it is just not being able to proceed. There's nothing stopping me now. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.